so I'm going to, I mean, firstly, I'm just, gonna, I mean, I've seen the film twice now and it's just an incredible piece of filmmaking. I mean, I think the whole, what Laura's done is incredible, but it's just a, a moving uh, story. I mean, I cried even more second time than I did the first time. I think it's one of those films when you, when you know what's going to happen, it's, yeah. yeah. Um, but before I, we get into the film, I just wanted to start uh, by asking you a little bit about about yourself and kind of what it is that you do and and, and how you came to be involved in in this documentary. So um, I'm I'm trained as an actor. I always worked as an actor, but um, since a few years, I actually train actors to for their underwater work. So if a, if there's a movie involving underwater scenes, I train the actors. To hold their breath longer or in scuba dive i bring them down i guide them through their scenes and i keep them safe so i work in an underwater film studio so how did you first meet steven and alessia um well i didn't know alessia until uh, until the accident uh, so but steve i met so i was a touring actor uh theater actor and i uh, i decided to go and live in egypt as my as my base uh, and and to do my dive course, uh, my scuba dive courses. Uh, and my instructor at the time was Steve. So he was my rescue diver instructor and then my dive master instructor. And because he was a free diver, he, he was looking for a buddy, a dive buddy to dive with every day. And so he proposed me to try free diving. And that's how I started this adventure with him. So, so you, usually when I do interviews for for films, it's it's in advance of their release. So it's it's, it's really nice today to be able to speak to you uh, a couple of months after the the film launched on Netflix. So can you just tell me about what you've made of of the incredible reaction to the film? Um, it was a tsunami of reactions and messages from total strangers all over the world reaching out to me. Uh, my Instagram just exploded and. In the beginning, it was quite overwhelming. I didn't really know how to deal with it. But um, it's just people sending me their tears all the time. Like, you made me cry. Or amazing movie, but they were just talking about themselves all the time. Like, th their grief. And and not, not asking me, like, oh, hey, how are you? Because you lost a friend. No. So it was like, everybody's so selfish about their emotions. And I took it bad in the beginning. But then I started realizing, like, Hey, hold on! Everybody is just grieving. They 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 met Steve for an hour forty eight minutes, and then they took him away from him, just like they did with me. And now they was just they just want to share the grief with me. I think, and it really helps me to to progress in my own grief. Actually, I after six years, I really feel like now I for the first time taking steps. So yeah, I'm really thankful to Laura and the, and the movie. Yeah, I mean, a good a good story still needs a good storyteller. I mean, can you just talk about what Laura you think has brought to this film in the way she's told it? Because the pacing, what she decides to give the viewer and what she decides to keep back is is masterful. I thought. Um, well, I think first of all, I think the project started out as a small local uh, project for Laura, uh, a Dublin story, like. Um, and what I what I feel is like she really grasps the 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 human part in it. Um, she stayed really close. She got really close with the whole free life community and and worked together really well. Uh, there is never a sense of sensation or like a how would you call that like sensationalist. Sensa yeah, like, sensationalize something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's never sensationalized exactly and. And I think that's wonderful. Um, of course, there are harsh images, like the blackout. It's not a nice thing to look at, for example. You can question that choice, and I don't like to see it, but it's so necessary. Even from the opening shot, like that whole dive and then ending up in the blackout from Malaysia, you, you just need that whole construction to understand why Steve did what he did at the end. If you don't have the full story, like the, if you don't see the full danger of the sport and and why we have to keep it so safe, then I don't think we we understand why why he made that decision to save her life in that way. 
I mean, of course, I mean, you've got such a hugely personal connection to this story. I mean, are you are you able to have you been able to watch the film back? I mean, I'm did you, I mean, I'm assuming you probably watched it once. So have you been able to revisit it or is it a bit difficult, or a bit overwhelming sometimes to, to watch this? Yeah. Film? Like, so I'm do, we're doing a lot of these screenings and um, and Q&A's. And so I've seen the movie once and that's when uh, it was a private screening in, in Copenhagen. Um, just for me and Laura, uh, and that was just too overwhelming. It was the first time I saw the movie after working with, with Laura on it, um, and it was it just killed me. Like, and then in the evening, I remember I had to do a Q and A, and I just couldn't. I was just sobbing, like in tear, in bits. Everything came back, and uh, that's why I was really scared, actually, of 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 my own reaction, but. Um, so no, I haven't seen it back ever since since April, and I'm not really ready or or looking for for it at the moment. Maybe in a few years or in a year time, I don't know. But at the moment, I'm fine. <laughs> it's like. So how how are you doing now? You went. It's been such a. I mean, it's what you've had to go through. What you and Alessia had to go through, and all the friends of Stevens, his parents, of course, we see in the documentary. I mean, it's it's been a few years, but obviously this year everything's come back up to the surface again through the film. Is it? You mentioned before that it's kind of, um, you know, in some ways it's sort of helping you come to terms with it. But has it been a difficult year for you, having it come to the forefront of your mind again? Yeah, I felt really nervous. Um... And everybody actually around. The, the the difficulty is like normally when you lose a close friend, you you're probably living in the same country or you still have your your group of friends to 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 as a support. But in our case, everybody lives across the globe, and to grieve you do it by yourself alone. And my friends at home, like close friends, they they understand of course, but they never knew Steve. They don't really fully grasp what free diving is only from stories but now ever since the movie came out it's so much easier to to connect to people and it's just if you have a question watch the movie and it's it's explained so well the accident is explained well steve's life and how amazing as a person he was you can you can see and feel it for yourself yeah it really helps me to take step forward and, and i'm i've been i haven't been that well in six years than I am now, actually. I mean, Stephen seems such a kind and generous man in, in, in spirit. I mean, I just wondered if, I mean, obviously that that's epitomized in his final act. Um, as a friend of his, as a really close friend of his, what are your kind of lasting memories of, of Stephen and, and the kind of impact he had on your life? When I first met Steve, he was he was this, I, I was doing my, my rescue course with him and uh, he's, he was very, very, very severe and very strict. Uh, he didn't allow any mistakes uh, in the execution of the exercises, and so he got mad at me because that was those were the first three days I met the guy, and he had this very thick Irish accent, and I couldn't understand him, you know. I, and his, he, he was cracking jokes all the time, but I, I didn't grasp them either. And I was like, oh, I have to I have to deal with this guy for the coming three months. Like, how is that going to work out? It it wasn't love at first sight. <laughs> But then uh, we grew fond of each other, and uh, yeah, he's he's the most funniest person that I know. He was fierce as well, but like he cracked me up till in, in, into tears. Um, and then everything that he taught me, I feel like it's my responsibility, kind of, to to continue that legacy. Like like what I'm doing with with the actors now, it's in, it's my world, but it's his world. It's integrating his world into what I was doing. And, and yeah, everything that I do, I kind of contributed to him. I mean, of course, what, what happened to him, it goes without saying, was such a, was such a tragedy. But he, it, it's, it's kind of amazing for him, his legacy, that one of the most incredible and profound acts of love I've ever seen is now has been documented or on screen for people to to see. I mean, would you say in in some ways that this documentary is so many things, but is it a love story? Do you think it's cool? No, it's not a lot. For me, it's not a love story. I mean, they were fond of each other, I'm, I'm sure, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't a couple. Uh, in I mean, we we live on a remote island in, of Dahab, and 
it's hard for 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 beach bums to to have a normal relationship of of a sort um and we often had conversations steve and i about look at us you know like almost 40 and still don't have a relationship and no kids and all our friends at home they're building houses or buying buying apartments building a family and what are we doing but no for me it's it's an act of love of course but it's also he was doing his job like he was doing what he was was hired for like he was a safety diver and he made the safety plan and he would never have forgiven himself if he wouldn't have made it yeah i mean one, one thing i mean for me personally as someone who has never sort of been done free diving and deep diving is i i can't personally make sense of what drives people to kind of risk their lives you mentioned when you see the faces with the blackouts afterwards i mean it's so haunting those images and all i could think of was like why are you doing this? But people do do it. People do have this appeal. I just wonder, as someone who's part of this world, who, who's been in this kind of community, what do you think it is that drives people uh, to keep deep diving in spite of, of the risks? Well, we, we, we always try to minimize the risk by never diving alone. There's always a, a, a big safety net. Like you have the safety divers with you. You are, you are attached to that, to that line um, with a lanyard. Um, you can't go deeper than the bottom plate is set. Um, but I think what drives us is it's like what any sportman does. Like you want to push boundaries. You want to push yourself a little bit more uh, deeper and deeper. It, it grows on you, right? Like the first time you, you, you pop your head on the water and start free diving, you don't think about setting records or going deeper. It's just like it's a sensation. It's like, wow, I'm at five meters and look, I'm fine. I don't breathe and, and, and I can enjoy the silence and, and that grows on you and you and then obviously you start playing a game with yourself and you want to get deeper and deeper. Yeah. So it gets quite addictive, I guess. <laughs> it is actually quite addictive. Yeah. I realized that now that I retired from the sport, <laughs> it was actually an addiction. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm sort of running out of time really today, but so I'm just my sort of final questions I was really going to ask. I know you're sort of because um, obviously we're a movie website as well, and I know you're you're an actor. Are you are you a big are you a big fan of cinema as well? Is that is that a big passion in your life as well? Because I know obviously you've been acting and you're a big fan of cinema. I said, and it's a, yeah, I just wonder if it's a a passion for you as as well because I know you're you're now retired in the art of kind of diving. So do you, do you spend a lot of time watching movies? Oh, I do. It's my first love. I think music and, and movies. Yeah. It's it's what I it's what I live for. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. Have you seen anything good recently? <laughs> I'm taking. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, not not in the movies at the moment, because it, in the summer I never go to the theater. Like, it's just that yeah, I prefer to be outside. But um, no, I, ha I have seen this um, uh, Norwegian series Exit. Mm. I was I was watching lately. Well, um, I would, but thank you so much for speaking to me today, Christoph. I know it can't be an easy thing for you to keep revisiting, and I know you've been through something incredibly difficult. But I thought the, uh, your, yeah, I think speaking to you has been great today, and, and I thought the movie we made was beautiful, and it really honours his, his a memory of obviously a very close. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys! <laughs> hey, you guys! <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!